of Deputy Bailey, which equally, I believe, have a huge role to play in the delivery of this plan as an oversight. And as I said earlier, this doll will be judged on its ability to deliver on housing and homelessness. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. Now we have still, we're awaiting uh, two more speakers, Deputies David Cullinan and Fiona Lachlan. If they're in the immediate vicinity, we can uh, avail of them now. Uh, is there anybody else who hasn't spoken? There's nobody else who hasn't spoken in the House. So if there is uh, nobody else and our two um, deputies on the list uh, aren't, aren't here, we have, to, we have to move on. Is it agreed? Is it agreed we move on? We have to get call the Minister to... to if I'm allowed, Mr. I'm, Mr. State. No, I'm happy to speak, that's fine. But if you want me to... Close. Am I allowed to let somebody in if they come, if they come along? Okay, fair enough. That's yeah, good enough. I, say, that's I good can enough. sit back. Okay. Provided they don't go on all night. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Who's, who's it again who says to come in? <laughs> it's David Cullinan and Fiona Lachlan. Oh, am I changing it's, mind? It's, uh, it's, it's Kildare and Dublin West. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, Chair, I uh, want to thank everyone for the contributions here today and yesterday uh, and over the last couple of months, over the last week, since the government was formed um, and even before that because uh, I think there was a lot, of, a lot of good work was going on in this whole sector around the housing and homelessness and discussion that started probably months ago at this stage, even during the election. And it became a very a major issue for everybody to focus their minds on. I think the quality of the debate and the informed debate, which doesn't always happen in this House, uh, was very, very, very clear. People genuinely want to solve this. We, some of us have different notions of how to, how to do it, different ideas, um, coming from different backgrounds, all that. But I think most people actually wanted to work and want it solved and want people to have a home and to, earn, to end homelessness, but also to end emergency accommodation and hotels and b and So I think we share that common goal. Yes, different approaches. The plan probably is, a, is an attempt to bring a version of everyone's approaches in it. Not, we might have different quantities or different ideas, but I think there's something in there for everybody that everybody can buy into and try to support. While I always try to push us to do more and to add in more, that's fair enough and everyone accepts that. That's the whole idea of having a, an action plan, that it's an evolving document. Yes, if something's wrong, take it out, give up on it, admit it was wrong, try it anyway, uh, but, add, but to constantly add in new ideas and try to change it on the way as well, if, if possible, that would that'll be, be important. Um, so I think that the, the document, Rebuilding Ireland, I think is, is, you know, judging from feedback from just talking to people and observation, listening to media, it's generally been pretty well re re received and I know Everyone's job is to push it even harder and to ask for more and totally understand that and, and likewise we'd like to do more too uh, if, we, if we had the resources and had the money and uh, trust me you might say it's only 100 million but the fight to get 100 million or to get the extra money is, is a fair battle too because every other department is fighting for it as well and I was in two departments before I know what it's like we all want some of the money and when you have uh, the fiscal space at a certain amount or as I say in my area physical space certainly when it comes to housing it's hard to compete for it and, and it's a bit of a charge so it is, uh, it is an achievement to say that an extra two Point two billion of, of the money ahead has been allocated to housing. Um, and, I, and I accept, you know, we'd, we'd love to spend hundreds of more mil, millions extra, ex, extra next year. Um, it's just not an option. But there is another 100 million allocated there in capital. That is a 40% increase, but we want to build on that in the year after. It's, it's nearly it's over a 100% increase. So it's to kind of keep pushing that out there as well. But I think we recognise that if we had more money we'd spend it, if we could, we would. But I think that this plan is a fair attempt to get a start and get it down the right direction and to build the capacity up both in local authorities and across all our agencies, um, but also uh, to build the capacity in the private sector as well to develop, to, to, to build houses again and to, and to restore it to those we were at years ago as well. Um, it's an ambitious and comprehensive starting point in the government's efforts and resolve to really deal with both housing and homelessness. And, and I'm going to say it's ambitious, but it's appropriate. It's right. It has to be ambitious. It has to hit targets. And even the committee had more ambitions. And that's, again, uh, the job of a committee. I was on the committee for years myself. Uh, an ideal process to really analyse policy and to push gov the government of the day, no matter who's in it. The committees are, have a major job to do that, to scrutinise, put ministers under pressure, put departments under pressure, and ask the questions. I've seen it from both sides. There's an essential job to be done there and constantly come up with new ideas and pushing forward as well. So I, I think, you know, we've got close to your targets you set out, but we're not there. And I think everyone's hope would be that this plan will even go beyond what, what we set out here and be able, able to achieve more as we go along as well. Um, just to, I, again, I said earlier on, the quality debate was very good. Um, I think members of the House are genuine and really want to, I really want to go for this. Um, I do have to say, though, and, and uh, I generally enjoy listening to, 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 to Deputy Bree Smith, but to, to claim that there's no, that the, it's the, 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 the belief in social housing or the effort of social housing is absent. I just can't have that go unchecked. I mean, a commitment to build 47,000 houses, probably all want more. It's not, it's, it's, it's a major uh, development if we can make it happen. And, and also allocating five, nearly five and a half billion 
Um, that's not a small change. That's a lot of money, a lot of taxpayers' hard-earned money. So I think that shows that there is a belief in social housing. We can, dis dis we can disagree over the percentages, but there's a commitment there to deliver a lot of social houses with a lot of money behind it as well, and that should be kind of recognised. I, I say it in all these debates, we can disagree, but we should always deal with facts as well, uh, on both sides. And even when it is, you know, that's what we should do as well. Um, again, the Rockless Committee was a very important part of setting this up and informing the debate and bringing forward the report. There's other, other um, suggestions in that. that you know, they're not gone away yet. They just couldn't all be factored into this. It couldn't all be achieved. And you do have, you know, you do have suggestions there around rent certainty and so on. And we, you know, developing a, rent, a rental strategy, that's what we will look at, how best to achieve that. But we have to bear in mind that we, want, we have to make it attractive to both investors and to tenants and to the users of it. So it's to get that right blend, and, and I understand where you're coming from as a committee, but we're, we're going to spend a couple of weeks, a couple of months now trying to tease that out further and come up with the best strategy we can to really make that sector work, because despite what people have been saying all night in a, in a previous debate, there is a desire for rental property. The rental in this part of social housing is up to about 20%, it's over it. And people aren't just interested in buying houses. If, if the rent is at the right price, the right price, if it's affordable, people are interested. But an, an owner's on his own give them that choice and develop a proper rental market with proper services around it and develop a proper community as well. That's what we have to work on too as well. Um, in, in part of this process, Minister Kobe and I have met and a lot of our department officials have met with a very broad group of stakeholders in, in, in all areas. Uh, we've hosted two very well attended stakeholder forums, uh, both of which generate constructive debate and feedback. The process has greatly added to, on, uh, to our understanding of the housing system uh, and, and its faults and its failings and how its difficulties are leading to homelessness for many people as well. So there's a fair understanding of that too. The housing system is a broad and interconnected set of markets and sectors. Importantly, each sector and market impacts on a different group of society. In developing the action plan, Minister Kobe and I were acutely aware of the need to deal with each part of the housing system individually but also to address the interconnectivity and the cross dependencies as part of the shape and the overall solution to build more homes. And that's why this process, the action plan for housing process is a whole of government. It's every department with their feet in. All the different agencies, everyone's asked to buy into this. Everyone's asked to put their name to the actions and the timelines and so on. Chair, just checking with you. I know I said I'd give away. Is that permitted or not? Is it allowed in the rules? It's, it's not, is it not? You're okay now. I'm not okay. Right, okay. Um, Again, so, you know, so it's a whole of government approach. Every department has, has their involvement in it. And I know most people's speeches were, the plans are reasonable, it's, it's got targets there, but can it happen? And again, the difference in this plan and other plans is that it is a whole of government approach. It does involve a lot of different departments. It involves a lot of consultation with stakeholders, with agencies, with all the different players. And that's the same process we followed, we followed in the Action Plan for Jobs process. And again, some people here are familiar with it, others aren't. But the Action Plan for Jobs process, it, it worked. It set targets that nobody thought could be achieved, and it went way beyond those targets. And why did it happen? It wasn't because of magic by the government, but because it was buy-in by the private sector, by all government departments, but it became priority number one. The focus of everybody was on creating jobs. And now, through this plan, the focus of everybody now is actually on building houses, social houses and private houses, and finding solutions to people who are homeless and who are in emergency accommodation. So there's a focus there, there's a drive there. It's backed up with actions, with timelines, with ownership, and with, with money, with real cash. And that's why it will work. I have no doubt this plan can work. Uh, in fact, it should, go, it, it, it should achieve a lot more. It should go beyond these targets. Um, and we'll judge that, we'll monitor that, and we'll adjust if, if needs be. And it's an ongoing process. I mean, there's, there's more ideas out there that we haven't captured in here, and we have to try to find them as well and put them into it as well. Um, Again, in taking the approach, we have the dual objective of repairing the broad housing system while at the same time providing real solutions for people. And for this reason, I was most pleased with the responses of the plan that reference the fact that for the first time, government was looking at housing in its entirety. This is really at the heart of the plan. It's all the solutions in one document. 84 actions are there, thereabouts. But it's, it's the focus there to make that happen. And to really restore the housing system to a sustainable level, you need to deal with all the component parts. We have looked under the bonnet of each sector and market of housing and come up with key actions to help repair what is broken or what can be done more effectively in each. And that's why we have the, four, the five pillars uh, to set out the different areas we're going to try and tackle in different ways. On homelessness, we have, on homelessness, we have set a very clear target to have no families in hotels by mid-2017, except in very limited circumstances. Now hopefully we'll beat that target be ahead of that, but that's a realistic time frame to say we can fix this, we can address that, and we will do it. And we have to do it, because it's just not acceptable. 
in this day and age to have families living in hotels and emergency accommodation and B&Bs. It's not appropriate either to have homeless people are living on the streets, but there's combination of different reasons for that and there's different solutions and again, there's a little bit of real involvement there of different departments to, to address that. But, and we will, over time, to make, you know, you know, address that and that's what we have to achieve as well. The challenge to, uh, to, to end to people living in emergency accommodation though, is, to, is to provide alternatives and to treble the rapid build programme to 1,500 homes is the key action to make that happen. And they, you know, they're set out there. It's 200 more this year, it's 800 next year and the rest of the year after. So it is going to happen. We've learned from the initial process and we can make it happen a lot quicker and that's what's, that's, that's what's going to happen as well. In the meantime, we're going to ensure that services for families, particularly children, in hotels and other emergency accommodation is far, is far better, including enhanced liaison and family support, child welfare, child protection, including family resource centres. The access to early year services, suitable completion programmes, enhanced locally available practical support for daily family life, access to free public transport for family travel and for school journeys, which is essential, but also practical supports and advice for good nutrition for those without access to cooking facilities, because it's, it's damn hard in your own kitchen trying to, trying to cook and cover all the basics of providing good food. It's even harder when you're living in a hotel, and we accept that and we understand that as well. The other side, though, is, 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 uh, of this debate is people who are rough sleeping, which is often compounded and tied in with mental health and addiction issues. There, there is a, this is a complex area that really requires cooperation with both the Department of Health, the HSE, and others as well. And for that reason, we are travelling the funding for mental health and primary care services for homeless persons from 2 million to 6 million in budget 2017. I think it's, again, an appropriate response to try to see how we can help these people and get them. Get them into a position that they can avail of a home and live in a home with support or shelter support around their own as well and try to deal with all the various issues that are, that are, that are adding to their problems as well. In examining the social, the, the social failing that is homelessness, one point was made again and again that prevention is far better than cure. We are therefore targeting families and individuals worried about or at risk of losing their home or being put out of their home or their rent agreement being finished. Um, and people who are genuinely worried that they won't be in a home or won't have a, 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 a roof over their heads. Um, again, we're doing this through a new awareness campaign, and the Taunus is here beside me as well, which is brought out, brought out a, new, a, a new arrangement, a new facility, backed up again with more money, more resources to try to help people get through their arrears difficulties, get through their mortgage difficulties, and stay in their home and work through that, and build more trust in that system, and try to get people to engage with the banks. Um, I'm not saying the banks are saints, but it's very hard that someone won't engage for, to help anybody, and it's very hard to even pinpoint a bank for a solution if the person will not engage. So we have to try to encourage that, and that's what the efforts of the Tarnish are through the, through the service are to encourage that engagement, to try to work through solutions as well. Our, ourselves and our own department in charge of mortgage to rent, it's a scheme that I believe has, has failed. Um, I would have thought that it would have, would have certainly was, was a solution for thousands of people in my view. Uh, it's been tweaked and it's been changed over the last couple of months. We're going to change it again. We've looked at new ideas at it, trying to bring in, 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 in more investors' money into this as well, to put more money in the pot. I believe that a new version of that scheme, which will roll out very shortly with some new ideas in it, can greatly uh, make an impact on people and give them a, a, a choice if they want to deal with their arrears and deal with a mortgage that they might not be able to ever afford in the future. But they'll have a choice to stay on their home. It hasn't, in my view, been really sold properly or explained properly. And I think if we believe in the scheme, we should back it up. And I actually believe that will help a lot of people uh, deal with their problem of debt but stay on their home. And I look forward to that working in a better way because I really, really believe it's a, it's a solution that's appropriate and fair and, and, and protects the family home for the family uh, of, the, of their time, in my view. So we'll, we'll, hopefully we'll be able to work on that through the committee as well in the, in, in the weeks and months ahead. Um, the link between lack of sufficient social housing and home, homelessness is clear. The lack of social housing options is also putting pressure on the rental sector with a, with a third of renters now supported by the state. Again, the target here is very clear. 47,000 new social housing homes by 2021 at a cost of 5.35 billion. And it, again, I mentioned the figures earlier on, but I just want to, it's worth clarifying them once and for all, because there is confusion or doubt or mystery around them, and I, I, I'd hate to, wrong information to be out there. It makes my life very hard when I'm trying to be on a radio programme. Um, on the money side, the Social Housing Strategy 2020, published in November 2014, committed to the delivery of some 35,600 social housing units in the period of 2015 to 2020, supported by investment of some 3.8 billion. The social housing element of the Rebuilding Ireland Action Plan, which was launched yesterday, proposed a significantly increased level of ambition, aiming for the delivery of 47,000 social housing units through build, refurbishment, acquisitions and leasing over the period 2016-2021. And it's supported by an investment of 5.35 billion, which is an affordable 200 million has been provided for the local infrastructure housing activation fund. So the 5.35 billion, just for the record, investment proposed for the social housing.
And, and I, I can, I, I've gone through these figures, don't you trust me here, I spent a few hours on these figures to make sure I'm right. Uh, the period comprises 4.5 billion in capital funding and 844 million in support of programmes funded from current expenditure. In terms of capital funding, the 4.5 billion being provided represents a very significant assignment of resources towards addressing housing needs. In summary, Minister Coburn has secured 2.2 billion, extra money, new money, Extra money, new money. I say it three times if I have to. Of the available five billion of capital fiscal space over the 2017 to 21 period, it is a two billion has been assigned to support the delivery of social housing. And I am absolutely confident of those figures, no doubt about it. And I, I understand where there might be confusion, but the figure is right. It's there. It's new money. And it's and it's and again it's taxpayers' money. It's not my money, it's not the government's money, That's taxpayers' right. money yeah. being invested in, in a key way as well. And again, the 200 million for the, for the local infrastructure fund I think is an important part of opening up sites, both for social housing but also for private housing as well. But again, to get the market moving, to get delivery as well. Um, so again, it reflects a very clear demonstration on the part of the government of high priority that it signs on behalf of us all, because the message is clear from everybody spend money in relation to housing. Um, now, in relation to building more homes, um, and again, I have no problem with the later stage committee to go through the figures if need be as well, because I am confident of the no doubt about that. When the housing market is working well, there is a good supply and a good, good range of new and second-hand homes for purchase, uh, which cater for the entire span of the market from starter homes upwards. At the moment, though, we are producing half of the 25,000 houses in a year we need. And again, half of that, again, are one-off rural houses. Uh, so they're not where we need them in, the, in, our, in our cities, mainly of Dublin and Cork, Limerick, Galway. So they're not exactly where we need them yet. But in, in fairness, from the last couple of months, working with a lot of you guys as TDs and senators and councillors and meeting councillors, there's a housing problem in all our towns and villages, it's not just in our cities. It's really, it's really prominent in our cities, but it's now uh, evident in, in all places. People are waiting for homes as well. So similarly, due to the shortage of new homes, the second-hand market is half what would normally be seen. And the key graph that shows this is on page 30 as well, people want to analyse this. It shows output predictions with the various elements of the plan implemented uh, versus the business as usual without these measures. And again, um, it, we believe that with this intervention that's in, that's in the plan throughout all of it, we can double that uh, up to 25,000 houses by 2019. Um, and it, it hopefully to go to 28,000, 30,000 by 2021. And there's no reason why it can't go further if everything here works. Because I do believe um, that when government intervene and commit to actions and say we're going to do something and back it up with money and back it up with a delivery unit, others will react and markets will react because competition, you can't beat it. And if we say we're going to build houses in state... Minister, will you yeah, bring your remarks to conclusion, please? You'll soon see action on the, field, on the field next door as well. So I do believe this, this can work. Um, and again, I'd like to, I, won't, I won't find the rest of the speech on the record, but it's there if anyone wants to look at it. Um, but to short of it is, this, 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 this will work. And I think I will say one last word. With the support of in this House, it can even get better. That's what it's all about. Okay, Thanks, that concludes the statements on the housing strategy. And uh, we now move to the committee stage of the process of crime amendment bill to uh, 2016 uh, from the Shannon. Uh, section 1. Does Section 1 stand part of the bill? Agreed. Section 2, does Section 2 stand part of the bill? 